Okay, here we go. Here we are. Hi, everybody. It's Allie from Heart and Soul with Andrea Galvin, who is oh, just a super wonderful lady. And um, she's always in the chat. She's uh, always offering us some great advice and asking us some really good questions. So she has volunteered to come on today. And yes, yeah, Sin McGann said hello, everybody, on this beautiful day. <laughs> Welcome, Andrea. Thank you. It's good to be so, here, Allie. I feel um, like we've known each other forever, so I think we probably have traveled together a few times. I'm sure, maybe even in the in the uh, astral travel realm, but definitely in other lifetimes. Yeah, you're, yeah. you're just a, a spirit that really resonates with me and with a lot of other people as well. So, yeah. yeah. So, um, wow, there's a lot to talk about. Uh, you use your own name as your avatar you don't put up a little you know another name and so tell us or tell the, the the folks a little bit about yourself and your you know what you've done in the past well i i um and this is you and i were talking before the show started um i never had the word download but i've always gotten information from something and it was something that i knew i could trust and I've known since I was little, I've gotten information, but I didn't live in a family where it was safe to talk about it. And I had a father that was violent. I had a grandfather that literally was in prison for raping people. Oh, and he oh, molested me as a little kid and he molested a whole bunch of other people. Yeah. And I've, so I've traveled as a little kid. I, I always, you know, and I'm sure little kids have this thought often. You're not my parents. I don't belong here and I'm not comfortable here. I had that as a little kid, but I, I knew my parents were my parents. I look like them. Right. And you right. know, I had sisters, I knew that, but I, I never felt comfortable. And mm -hmm. the they, whatever was communicating with me from the other side, um, I always I knew I knew they were trustworthy. I didn't know where they came from, and I had no idea that that. And, and, you know, this whole thing of getting through COVID, in the time of COVID, when I've been cut off, it's finally allowed a time for enough input to come in where I've connected. I have had so many psychic, you know, I've seen souls leave people's bodies. I've, I, you know, I worked, I work in the recovery field. Well, I'm not a counselor or any of that stuff now, but I came in the back door because I knew sign language. And at that time there were, you know, mm -hmm. wherever the federal federal money is, that's where the programs open. Sure. I became a counselor in uh, drugs and alcohol because I knew sign language. I was using at the time. I'm an addict in a variety of things. And if you look at disease, if you put a hyphen between dis-ease, it's uncomfortable in your own body. And once I heard that, I was like, oh, man, I am not comfortable in my own body. I, I show up, but this is not yeah. a comfortable place to be. Yeah. Well, you so, had too much trauma, too, you know, in your yeah. own life. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. Well, see, I see that we co-create our lives, though. We I do. Picked, I picked my family. Now, for people in, well, in early recovery, especially when you, when I say I picked my father, I picked my grandfather. I picked a man, I picked a grandfather who molested enough women that he went to prison for a long time. And my mother was in show business and I grew up with a mother in show business. And as a little girl, she was taken to the prison to tap dance for her, her father. And she didn't even know that that was what was going on. Oh, wow. So uh, the whole unfolding of understanding all of this and actually the 12 step program for me, you know, I was born Irish Catholic and, you know, I, the, the commandments never worked. I knew I wasn't going to have a God that was an old, uh, an old white man, man, those guys, you know, they molest little kids. Right. Yeah. I was also, um, I have awareness of past lives, at least three of them. And in one, um, I was hung. Um, I used to work with herbs and I was on a horse. Uh, it's clear as day. I was on a horse and I, uh, 
I can, my, my pride can get in the way and I can be a know-it-all. And I was sitting on that damn horse with a noose around my neck thinking, my God's going to take care of this. And I really don't care what you all think. I am not going to, this is not happening. I can remember that as I was sitting on the horse, there was uh, a lot of like foliage. Um, and, and some of the people that I, I worked as a healer with herbs in my community. And there were people, they couldn't help me because if they would have come out of there, they would have been hung too. So they, mm -hmm. and they were trying to like say, we love you, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, got it covered here, man. <laughs> my God's going to do it. It's well, the guy that was next to my horse, he was on a horse. He slapped my horse's butt and that horse took off. Oh, I'm going to be signing during this. My my sign language just kicked in. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. Yeah. 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 It is. It's a beautiful thing. You just do it normally. I mean, I don't do sign language, but I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. anyway, the horse took off. And as I, as I came down in the, the noose tightened, right before I left my body, I was mad at the God of my understanding at that point. For disappointing. I came, in, yeah. I came into this, I came into this life with, you know, in the Catholic church where it was an old white guy as, <laughs> and I'm like, no, I didn't know why, but I'm like, no, I am not buying this. It's a bunch of bullshit and I'm not buying it. And I knew that even as a little girl that whatever mm -hmm. these all, whoever these people are or wherever I came from, I'm not like a part of all of that. A lot of this journey and it, it's, it's been since COVID that all of this, all of this stuff like makes sense to me now. Uh, um, you have yeah. time. Yeah. You had time. Yeah. Well, and they're putting it all together for me. So, sure. um, yeah. Yeah but they're not giving you a break. You need some rest. The same thing's happening to Arlene McMahon, actually, on the Nasty Women Show. Yes. I mean, all kinds of things happened to her, and she hasn't been able to sleep for days. So, yeah, yeah a lot yeah. of people are opening wide. Yeah. Wow. Well, the whole thing with, uh, and that's one of the things I want to just bring up as an awareness and a topic for our community to pay attention to. The thing that I've, I've learned a lot about addiction because, you know, food, relationships, mm -hmm. overworking, all of that. What that does is it lowers our vibration. Oh. The reason oh. not the reason not to use substances or behavior in an addictive way is because it lowers our vibration. And the only way for me to be okay is to keep my vibration up and to keep reminding, you know, I don't want to lose this community. So I, I, I'm right. kind of I'm going, hey, guys, you know, this is 3D bullshit we're talking about. This is like, you know, yeah. entertainment tonight or something. This is not why we're here. We all came to this planet because there's some really important stuff for ourselves and for this planet. Yeah, for everybody. Yeah. Yes. And one of the things that I saw twice pretty early on and I thought, wow, I'm not sure if this is going to be my place. I, I saw readers who were drinking and and reading cards and i watched the the person whose room it was get drunk oh on screen okay and i thought it's i don't have a judgment for people i know i, I no. work with addicts you know um, I, yeah. I i i have you know i i i took i was a counselor for young women who were shooting heroin and their little kids found him dead on the couch. I mean, you know, my That's my experience, sad. yeah, well, and my experience in addiction, it's not about judgment, but we are a community that are we're becoming aware Awareness. that mm -hmm. yes, our vibration, we can go back into the old, you know. If I if I want to lower my vibration, I start eating sugar. It makes me feel terrible. I'm diabetic. It makes me feel terrible. You sound like me. I'm sorry. I, I have these problems at times too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. and I can go into, it can put me into like a, a sleep coma. Uh -huh. I, and I use 12 steps because those are avenues. It, it's just, we have, there's many paths to the same place. They're all, yeah. yeah. The 12 yeah. step stuff works for me. And I can tell you that the young addicts that I, I've been working with, they don't, Addicts are not going to stay clean or even choose not to die 
because they know that they could die. That not, does not keep people clean. The young people that come to me now, and now it's more like as a sponsor, it's awareness of how we're connected spiritually. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and one of the sentences that stops them in their place, I say, what if we've been on this planet before? And what if we're down here to learn something? And what if you go out with your friends and do one set of drugs and it takes you off the planet and you turn right, right back around and have to come back down in a baby body and start all over and get to the awareness that I'm of what I'm telling you now that right. has stopped more people from, from going back out and buying, you know, the drugs yeah. that are, I mean, one shot today and, 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 and I have buried, I have buried so many addicts in my I'm lifetime. Sure. Oh. But when when we start talking about spirit and life purpose and how we all come together, mm -hmm. I've had people call me and say, I want to use right now, but I know they say, I'm afraid I'm going to have to come back in a baby body. And Good for them. <laughs> for for me, it's, it's junior high. I didn't, I didn't want to come back for junior high. So yeah. 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 I understand. Yeah. Who wants to do it? I mean, I'd like to think this might be the last life here, but I'll be doing things somewhere else, you know? Well, you but, know, yeah. Marielle, one of the things um, I have, I, I have several past lives that have come to me in, in a lot of ways. And I, I haven't ever gone to anybody for that information, but one of my past lives, um, the awareness of it. Oh, wait, I just, I do right out of my head. So that's okay. That's okay. Yeah. It'll come Ooh. back. It'll it will come, come back. back. Yeah. I was going to just re uh, recommend if anybody here has never read anything by David Hawkins. Oh, I have. No, you haven't? Oh, you have. No? He has, one of his first books, he tells us what the vibration is for everything. And uh, like, like even Buddhism, Christianity, Judaism, this, that, everything. And um, it's, it's done by... Um, muscle testing and, oh, and so yeah yeah, well, I'm yeah. Familiar with that well, you know what that is um yeah but it really shows weak points and it also like it's like you know say there's a thousand you can be up to the thousand you're the buddha up here or whatever but uh, you know the things that are um stacked on top of each other are amazing and a lot of it of course has to do with race mind and staying in the 3d yeah yes yeah. and when we go back down when we drink while we're trying to work with spirit, especially if we're claiming leadership roles, you know, I'm mm -hmm. claiming a leadership role, but I'm not really sure what the role is. <laughs> I have yeah. a lot of experience in a lot of different areas and I don't know how it all fits. I have a teacher soul and I do know that. Piece. You, you do. You have yeah. a teacher. Soul. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And in my, and in my teaching, I worked with, uh, um, one of my one of my stories that I actually um, shared with a couple of people in my class when we would get into those little one on one things. Uh -huh. Yeah, I worked with a Down syndrome kid. He was sixteen, had no language, and was violent. Uh -huh. And at that time, I was really involved and enmeshed in shamanism, in in the practice of shamanism, and worked with a working group. The my teacher was part of Michael Harner's three-year program. Oh, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Sandra uh, Ingerman was in my teacher's class. The oh, first, gosh, class. she's how, wonderful. Yeah. Well, there's a whole bunch of stuff with shamanism that I can share. Anyway, I, I, I you know, I feel really safe and comfortable in the whole shamanic thing. And I was in Washington, D.C. I was actually working on a doctorate. And I, you and I have had, had little exchanges about that. I, I decided not to do that whole piece. And I was coming back to the East Coast from the D.C. area. And my drum and all of my tools, and I love paraphernalia. I was a great <laughs> smoker. Man, I had, I had Mearsham pipes. I love yeah. paraphernalia. So in, in yeah. psychic work, oh, give me it. And I had a lot of, I had gifts from my, my teacher, my first teacher. 
Mm -hmm. And I can remember I had my stuff in a storage place and, and my dear friend, and he is a, um, a soul connection, a soul traveler. And he's, we have a, almost a 30 year friendship. He and I both saw the drum and it was in a case and it was leaning against the door. And I thought, okay, it's out. So we'll see it. And so we had this whole drive from Washington, D.C. back to, I went back to Martha's Vineyard. Mm -hmm. um, and during the time that I was in D.C., my father died. There was a lot of stuff. And there was a lot of psychic stuff that was going on, too. Yep. And he and I had this discussion. Um, you know, I, I produce shows and stuff like that. And on the Vineyard, I, I did a lot of that concerts and stuff things like that. Mm -hmm. And um, he's a singer songwriter as well as a teacher. Wow. And, and I also, the whole, the way our souls work is what, at least from my experience is when we hit a trauma, sometimes the soul energy has to lift up and out and we kind of go on automatic pilot. Uh huh. That makes sense. And soul retrieval, which is what Sandra Inkerman, man, she, she's like, Mm -hmm. and was, you know, in Bruce first class. Right. Um, the, the soul retrieval is about bringing back those pieces yes. of the soul. And, and it, and literally you, I, I can see sometimes when I look at people um, when that part is open and, and I've learned that there's, you know, that how we have boundaries and in 12 step program, we learn about codependence and you, you need that on the other side too. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's good to know. Yeah. You know, yeah. I've had my dad did a did a ninth step amends from the other side, which wow. it 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 blew me away. Yeah. Well anyway, um we were dry Larry was driving me back to the vineyard and it was mm -hmm. after my, my father's death and I was like, Oh, I'm gonna go back to my community. And I was mm -hmm. talking to him and I could see I he was one of the people that I saw his soul, there was Swiss cheese. He had so many energy pieces that needed to be invited back. So, yeah, They don't go like far away. They're, they wait for the invitation to come back in, but it, they do need to be invited back in and it needs to be a consciousness for us. If we're mm -hmm. inviting that soul energy back in, it, it's kind of like with guides. If you're going to have a guide and I don't know how to do this very well yet, you need to develop a relationship. And that's the same with those pieces of ourself that sometimes have to step out in order to just stay in body. Right. right. It's not, you know, we're probably going to leave our body quickly. So anyway, Larry and I had this long discussion and um, it, in fact, we were, it, this is, it's sort of a, um, we passed the, we were going through New York and we were, we could either go, through Philadelphia or take the highway. We were talking so much we missed the highway, which would have been the quick <laughs> way. So we uh -huh. ended up going through Philadelphia. And that's always whenever he and I are talking, we'll say, okay, are we taking, are we going through Philadelphia or are we taking the highway on this one? <laughs> because you get to the same place, but it's a different experience. Different. Yes, it is. <laughs> and we have freedom of choice with all of that. Right. Um, so we got back and he said, well, will you, you know, will you do some soul retrieval work with me? And I said, yes, Allie, we unloaded that U-Haul, my drum and all my tools did not come, come with me from Washington, DC mm. Gone. disappeared. And now I that's said, trauma. <laughs> Larry, that's trauma. Yeah. Well, I said, Larry, mm -hmm. He said, he said, I looked, I made sure we, everything was, I said, me too. And I, you know, that whole assume, I assumed he had put it in. He assumed I had put it in. It did not right. come back. And I, I, I felt once again, betrayed. I felt the same yeah. feeling I felt when I was on that horse with the noose around my neck. Yep. I'm like, yep. I don't know what this is all about. This was a path that I could believe in. And now all my tools are gone. I said, Larry, I can't do this. And he looked at me and he said, you see that I have parts of me that have, and, he, and it, it, it affected his life in every area. And, you know, he's in 12-step program too. And, and 
chose the, the hard ways, you know, in yeah. addiction, you can take some easy ways or you can take hard ways. People that are choosing the hard drugs, they're souls that are like, man, I'm going to do this. I'm strapping on my boots <laughs> and you're either going to get it or you're not. That's my ne that was my nephew before he died. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and the thing is, is that I said, I can't do it. And that night I had, a, now I know a download and it's like, no, it wasn't even, yeah, that night, um, I, I got it. I, you know, it was like, you can still do it. And I, and I'm arguing with whatever they is. And I'm saying, no, I can't, I don't have my, I don't have my drum. I don't have any of the things that I would normally use. They said, doesn't matter. They said, well, they said, sit, have Larry sit across from you. So we were like this, you know, eyeball to eyeball, take his hands and we will guide you through it. And I'm like, oh shit, this is kind of like, you know, go to the principal and say, we're going to suspend school, but they're not going to give me the whole pr plan on how this is going to work. I'm not going to go in and say that. If right, I'm right. Whole plan. And I thought, I'm not, I don't know if I want to do this. And they mm -hmm. said, just do it. And I said, okay, Larry, this is the deal. I, I was just told that if you and I, and it was 10 o'clock at night. I remember looking at the clock. If you and I sit and hold hands, they are going to walk me through soul retrieval. I have no tools. I have no idea how this is going to come out. Yep. And from 10 o'clock that yes. night through 4 a.m. in the morning, they told me exactly what to say and all of that. And when it was all over with, the thing that happens with soul retrieval is people, literally their face changes. As, really? part, as their soul energies come back, they become whole. Uh-huh. And literally, wow. and he was a singer songwriter and he, he literally could not complete singing a song. And, and he was prolific with what he wrote, but he could not complete singing a song. Because he when, had so many missing parts. Yes. Yeah. And by listening to uh, listening to the they, to the spirit, my spirit guides, at the end of it, it was like, this is how you will be working from now on. And I'm like, okay, yeah, flying by the seat of my pants. You get a piece of it, but you don't get the whole of it. And so sometimes I hold back because I'm like, man, you only gave me like, if, if I picked up a book and I looked at the cover of, of the book and said, oh, I like the title and, uh, you know, those are nice pictures, but I haven't opened the book up. That's sometimes how it feels. Yeah. I, but you I, knew everything that was in the book, really. You just had to trust well, yourself. Well, uh, no, I was actually yeah. told them for me. Well, or maybe, maybe. Yeah. I mean, the yeah. whole thing with the Akashic Records. Right. I'm on shamanic journeys where I... I journeyed to a place called the void. I had never been in the void before. And I thought, oh my God, this is what the Catholic church call, calls limbo. Right. That experience, it was terrifying for me. Sure. That's the I bardo was, too. The bardo in, in uh, Buddhism. Is, uh, is, yeah. Well, yeah. the woman I was journeying for, uh, it was a good friend of mine that said, you know, I'm feeling uncomfortable. This friend passed a few years ago and, and I'm feeling like she's not comfortable. And she said, well, you journey. I'm like, Oh my God, that's my, like my best friend, Nancy, I can do. I... She didn't tell me her friend had been murdered. Oh and when, my I, God. when I got, when I got to the, to the void, there uh -huh. was a whole bunch of stuff that went on. And I, all of a sudden, when I saw this woman bear, it's a long story and uh, it, it, it's, it will take up all this time. But anyway, when I actually saw her, her face looked like a Picasso. It was like, it Ooh, literally, okay. I, I could see like scar stuff. And I'm like, what am I seeing? Cause I had no idea that right. this woman had been murdered. Right. And not only was she murdered, her body was chopped up into little pieces and put in plastic bags. So I got, I got my ass was humbled. It was like, girl, if yeah. you're going to do, you know, you're, you're venturing into this, like, oh man, I got this. And it's like, this is serious stuff. Just like yeah. bear is a serious guide for me. And I hear people that kind it almost sounds like that it's a teddy bear or, you know, oh, yeah. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah. God, this yeah. is, a, this is a bona fide path. And there's many paths to the same place. There are. 
Yeah. yeah. Shamanism for me is like, I didn't trust humans, mm -hmm. but I could trust animals. So that was the path that I, my soul could connect up. Sure. I'm ending up in the same place at all you that are tarot readers and psychics and mediums and all that. I'm ending up in the same place, but the, the, the pathway for me is um, one that I could, I felt comfortable with. But even with that, it's like, you know what? Spirit's bigger than all that. Spirit's even bigger than shamanism and power animals and, and even guides and all that. It's bigger than all of that. It is. So, and yeah. remaining humbled, remaining humbled and, and open to learn more. Uh, it has to go in place or else it, it just shuts down again. And that's, that's not a good thing. Yes, answer. yes. Yeah. And the beauty of this community is that I just keep connecting with workers. We're all workers. And I on the show yesterday, I, I can't remember who it was, but um, I, I had the privilege of going to Delphi. And, and I met a woman. And because bear is my power animal, of course, I was drawn to the woman, this little old woman on the side of the road that was selling honey. Oh man, I, I was like, oh, I bet she has the best honey in the world. <laughs> and as I went to I went and bought some of her honey, she kind of talked to me, and it was like she talked to me about the Oracle of Delphi, and that that was like people would come for for uh pilgrimage. Right. But all, all of us were all the way around the path going up there and all the way up there we all had different gifts and the pilgrims that were coming to finally speak to you know the grand poopa the oracle of delphi at the top had the privilege and the we got we got to be a part of all of that big spirit energy and i i thought oh my god there were there were seers and like you know all mm -hmm. the way up and I've had such a strong inkling that a lot of us were in Delphi as the seers for people, the pilgrims that were going up to the um, Oracle of Delphi. I don't know if that's true, but it feels. Sure feels good. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I have a very big affinity for Greece. I have a very big affinity for the Oracle of Delphi. And, oh. and you know, know thyself, nothing in excess. <laughs> Absolutely. You, know, you, maybe, yeah. you were maybe the you were maybe the grand poopa. <laughs> I, I don't know about that, but I was standing beside you at the very least. I think, yeah. There's a very deep connection. I've I've wanted to go to Santorini, and um, and, you know, it just it just pulls me. And Crete, even down yes. you know, underneath. Yes. 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 Yeah, that does too. Wow. Yeah. You have absolutely got to come back when we can just talk about shamanism and some of those things i would i'm not gonna we're not cutting off right at this moment but i want you to and i i i think that we could um you know throw some interest in there and who knows maybe you could host a class off off you know on zoom or whatever you want you know but you'll get to the drum in meditation and the yep. whole thing around power animals and yeah the yep. interesting thing about um shamanism when we journey there's worlds there's a lower world a middle well as much as I know, lower world, middle world, upper world. Sure. I feel really comfortable in the lower world because that's animal, rock, mineral. It's of right. the earth. Right. Middle yep. world is this where we are now, but it's called non-ordinary reality. Okay. There, there's ordinary. You and I are supposedly in ordinary reality right now, but there's a mm -hmm. parallel non-ordinary reality that, in a journey, we we travel to. We you could actually see. come into this, come into where you and I are now in non-ordinary reality. Mm -hmm. And then the upper world is um, uh, guides, helpers. I knew that there was extraterrestrial stuff there, and it scared the shit out of me. And I'm like. I never wanted to do upper world journeys. And Brew, my teacher, my, my first shamanic teacher, he was like, Andrea, you need, and I said, no, I, there's something not comfortable with that, with the whole extraterrestrial stuff. And yeah. it turned out, I, you know, while I was involved with a, a, a new teacher, a new sh uh, shaman who presented himself and took me under wing, um, I hooked... <laughs> I hooked up with this guy that um, he actually, he made a medicine wheel in my backyard. Oh, I have, I love medicine. Oh my God. Well, you know what he did though? <laughs> I was, uh, again, well, this was, I was living on Cape Cod 
Uh -huh. And it was when the Korean airliner went down and he's, he yes. came to me and he said, Andrea, those souls are really confused. Will you go out to the, you know, the ocean with me tonight? We need to do some work and help those souls move. Right. I, I, I didn't trust him all the way, but I went. And after that night, he started going to the beach and, it, and he started exchanging the rocks that he had in the medicine wheel for crystals. He actually met, he made a portal and in exactly the same spots where the rocks were. Yes. And I was like, man, I don't, well, I didn't know he was making, I didn't even know what the hell a portal was to be perfectly right. honest. <laughs> yes. White Feather, the shaman that I was working with at that time, he knew that I, I was like in danger. Okay. He couldn't get to me. He tried calling, he tried emailing, messaging, he couldn't get to me. And he was told clearly, Andrea needs to find her way to you. And there was all kinds of crazy stuff. And Allie, you know, again, my friends on the vineyard where I got clean and where a lot of this stuff was heightened, uh -huh. my one friend, Nancy, I called her and I said, Nancy, I'm really scared because I said, the word portal has come to me. And you know, Doug has exchanged these rocks for these crystals. And I said, I, at night, you could see the energy of it and I could see it going around. And then I saw the guardian of the portal standing out. And it was like in my backyard. Oh, how I, wonderful. <laughs> well, no. No, and you were like, afraid? You were afraid. Oh, no, okay. I was, I, you know, okay. I knew this was not of our world. Okay. Okay. And I, I get you. And I yeah. portal. You know, I, yeah. I play Scrabble. I, you know, I know it means like kind of an opening. And I'm like, yeah. I don't know what he's guarding or what's going to come through there, but not in my world. Right. And so I finally, I got in my car. I drove to White Feather's house. I said, he goes, Oh, am I glad to see you? He said, I have been praying for you because Doug ha Doug has moved towards power. And interestingly enough, he started drinking at that point too. So he lowered his energy into oh. wanting have power, right? The 3D money, property, prestige that diverts us from our spiritual path. Right. He started that, and he was thinking that you know I'm going to make this portal, I'm going to hook up, or, or whatever. That was that. My judgment is there, but right. he said, he said you need to close that portal, and it'll go away if you close it. I said, well, mm -hmm. you come and help me because he's helped me with other many other things. Right. Um, and he said, I actually can't go over there. You have to do it on your own. And he, oh, gave, me the, he gave me the herbs. He taught me the songs. And he said, you're going to leave my house and you're going to go over there and you're going to do that as soon as you go over there. I said, White Feather, I'm scared. I don't yeah. know. And he said, oh, and you have to wait until it starts to get dark so that when the crystals... I said, well, will that guardian be there? He goes, I don't know. It won't oh, be there. Sounds like an episode guardian. of the Twilight Zone. <laughs> well, and you know, you, I question my sanity often because, you know, this isn't necessarily stuff that you talk with the rest of the world about, you know. Uh -huh. But these are the, once you choose the spiritual path, we get the opportunity many, many times to, oh, I'm going to pop off this path and then pop back on which is totally kind right. we have free will we have free will to do that well and i've done Man. that yeah and and i i don't like how i feel when i'm off it you know it, no. it's like yeah it's wh what's going on here there's no balance yeah and yeah. and it doesn't even if there's if we're you're being guided to do and <laughs> <laughs> no, but angel star well the way that i know to do I, I'm aware that safety is really important mm -hmm. at a spiritual level and at a at, and at a at a real physical level. Right. I I I only had the money to take four classes. I took four of Kim and um, uh, Susan, Susan Lynn's Lynn. classes. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But Jean and I have hooked up, and I go to Jean's, and and then I I'm at in the at the it up and running through zoom you're frozen i don't know if i'm frozen or you're frozen but i think 
Yeah, I don't know. Okay. Are that we happens okay? sometimes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you're, I think you're back, but you're, yeah. you're kind of blurry. You're kind of blurry, but that's oh, okay. Well, All right. Spirit does that too. It keeps you humble. <laughs> it does. It's like, okay. At any time I can change it. <laughs> oh gosh, it's doing it again. <laughs> now I'm gone too. <laughs> <laughs> time to change yeah. gears. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I realize I'm blabbing. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. You have a place to blab and, and people yeah. are fascinated with what you're saying. So, you know, well, I really think, yeah, I really think that um, there's going to be a lot of interest in learning more about your, your path and everything than, and maybe teaching and, and uh, you're well, welcome. And always. I'm supposed to be writing. I, I, I have, uh -huh. I'm a, I, I've been gifted with a lot of talents. I, you know, the That's great. Language, but yep. also writing and I'm writing a later stages of recovery. Good. Uh, for all 12 step programs through the lens of, a, of spirit. Wow. I and, love that. <laughs> yeah. That's well, me. and I'm kind of procrastinating because I'm getting all these downloads and I'm like, I know I'm supposed to integrate this, but I don't know how, but yes. I do know that spirit will lead. Yes. Also, my mother was in show business and she was kind of like a Shirley Temple. And oh. before she died, she wrote, her, her stuff down and it's called mama drove the bus before she died. She said, Andrea, put this in a, in a saleable form and it'll be a fabulous movie if I can ever get the damn thing done. So I've got two writing projects. And what I'm really getting is you need to, even if, even just for your own self, you need to, you need to bring in all this because I've always just accepted, oh, okay, they are telling me, or there's something greater than me that's directing this. Right. And it's always about now. It's always about healing mm -hmm. the bigger piece, but it's through now and all this other outside stuff. The Akashic Records, guides, helpers, it's all for right now and mm -hmm. our movement forward. We can jump back and go back and forth in time with all of that stuff, but it's for now. Sure. So, well, anyway, if people want to hook up, um, what what I'm what I can offer this group um, because I think ninety nine percent or maybe even a hundred percent of us are all people. My stories, I've had a lot of experiences, but it's not unusual. Every person I've heard, we're all in we're all in this together. We're all in this together. Yeah. yeah. And mm -hmm. I, I know the men are part of it too, but I see you guys as my soul sisters. Right. Well, everybody, I mean, everybody's got that balance of male and female energies. Yes. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So through Facebook, you can go on Facebook, you can ask to friend me, or you can send me a messenger, send me a message through messenger. I will send you the link for Zoom. You have, Zoom is free. The safest mm -hmm. way to do teaching and working online with you won't get um the book the zoom bombers or any of that is through. right <laughs> that's right yeah, yeah. There, mm -hmm. there will be no zoom bomber well they they aren't gonna there come was through. once but yeah they, they fixed it i think yeah yeah well but um, it's not through youtube it's only through zoom i correct. have a private channel and so i'm opening up on wednesdays I live in California, 11 o'clock in the morning. I'm going to have a three-hour period of time. People can come and go as they Good. need to. Uh -huh. um, and so that that's the way, you know. Yeah. I, I don't see myself on YouTube right now because I have so many other projects I'm working on. But you're not adverse to it at some I'm point. Not, no, I'm not adverse to it. But the thing is, is that I'm also in a human body. And there's a there's a, a saying in the twelve step program: less problems of money, property, or prestige divert us from our primary purpose. Yep. The first yep. step talks about relief from addiction, whatever the addiction is. And the way to know if you're in addiction is if you're doing something when you're supposed to be doing something else. Oh dear. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> well, and you know what I think <laughs> happening with all of our channels. How many of you out there, I don't have a lot of money. I'm buying stuff that I should not be buying. Right. I, I, was given a tar I, I was given a tarot deck. That deck is, is the deck that I can get really accurate tarot stuff. 
How many tarot decks do I have now? How many tarot decks have I bought during COVID? Five. And I'm not oh my even. God, I've had 35. Don't feel bad. <laughs> but I mean, that, that, okay, so that's, yeah. I see addiction. Yes. That's, you know, that's, I've worked, you know, in the field. Mm -hmm. I've worked with, and, and I've buried a lot of people that, and it's no judgment that they made the choice to continue to stay 3D or to go back to 3D, mm -hmm. but I miss them. The young women that their little kids found them dead on the couch because they were mad at their boyfriend and they're like, they'd been clean for two years. They were take, you know, sponsoring people and they're mad at their boyfriend and they're like to their boyfriend. Right. And they're like, I'm going yeah. to buy a little bag. They, they shoot it up and their, their kids find them. And the, you know that nobody's talking about that in addiction nowadays right. and, and drugs, but we have a whole generation uh, and they're all our rainbow kids guys yeah. it's our it's our rainbow children that are coming in and oh. they're coming in and they're for orphans because i know many children who both their father and their mother died of drug overdose or and the COVID thing, now right well, yeah well yeah yeah, yeah. but i yeah. i mean i'm talking about yeah. like addiction because that's addiction a problem yeah yeah. I stay really in touch with that community. I sponsor women. Yeah. 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 You know, the other thing with that, 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 that keep a couple, I have a couple young women, their mothers had addiction. And one, her mother was, um, you know, on the streets, didn't get clean, was hit by a hit and uh, oh. run driver and died. And people who asked me to sponsor them, I, I always know, okay, their spirit saying, okay, we're going to strap on the seatbelt and we're going to do the work. Right. And it was so funny because Scott and I, I, I have discussions with people, but I have them like offline. Yep. And I was telling Scott about this one, this young one, one woman and her mother. And he said, Oh, give me a little bit of her information. I did. Scott went into meditative state he's he got me part of a, a driver's license or the license plate of the car the make of the car where it happened wow who the oh my was it happened in california and, he, and then he said oh and i can't remember the name of the, the town now he goes oh do you know anything about such and such town and as he as he and i were talking i i googled it it's the town right next to where the woman was was hit and oh killed my. So, <laughs> and the police would not do anything because she was an addict and she was high and she was hit. Marginalized. She was marginalized. But yeah. Scott gave me the information and I was uh, able to say to her, to say to the daughter, sweetie, you got to stay clean. Because right. you, you just hopped on this and, and there's no coincidence that you hopped on this. So she actually took the information to the detective. And they're using that information. Oh, I don't know what the outcome of it wow. is. Be, wow. But yeah. Scott, yes, yeah, Scott gave me that information. Scott I Allen's spiritual essence. Yes. yes. Wow. Yeah. Oh, we my goodness. Talk, we don't talk about all that, you know, because it's right, right. private yeah. stuff. No, right. Yeah, I but I mean. Got help from him. That's wonderful. Practical, practical shaman or shamanism. Yeah. Shamanism is everyday it's to be used in everyday life. Right. That, 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 that is for real. Absolutely. Wow. wow. So, I mean, everything that you've said um, shows resilience. So you've had to have resilience your whole entire life. And I would imagine that, you know, while you probably had some days or times or whatever that you, um, you know, had a bad day or whatever, you just seemed to take the time. And then you came here and found your tribe and then you found the, the classes that you needed in the right time. Um, will you also it's, hear? It's really the people connection. Okay. And I can tell you, you know, what the whole life story piece. Um, I, t I've taken time out. Right. I, when I was teaching school, I worked with kids. Well, my little Joey story, I think I started to say that. 
I worked with this Down syndrome kid and um, I taught him some of the circle songs that are sacred songs that when you're going to do sh shamanic journey in a circle, in a work okay. circle. And we would sing the circle songs before he would do the reading. And I started with sign language. He was hard at hearing. And then we were able to move to speaking because there was a language base blade. Right, right. And one day Joey came in and this is so funny. They put me, you know how they put special ed always like outside in the portable? I mm -hmm. was in the planetarium portable. It was no longer. <laughs> was oh my no goodness. Longer, but that's where I taught. And Joey came in and he, um, and I was kind of in a hurry and I had a lot of stuff going on. And I'm like, you know, I just want to get the reading part done and get him back to class. And Joey looked at me and he said, Andrea, do you see me? And I'm like, Joey, you know, we need to do circle songs and do reading. He goes, no, Andrea, do you see me? And I was like, Joey, yes, I see you. But he would, he was saying it like I say it, and that's not how Joey communicates as a Down syndrome kid. Okay. And he looked, literally, eyeball to eyeball, he looked at me and he goes, Andrea, do you see me? And at that point, Allie, the veil lifted. And I saw him. I saw his soul. I saw who he was. Wow. And I sat back and I'm like, damn, there's not even any other teachers around here. I'm out in this portable. I can't go out and say, oh, my God, jo Joey just lifted the veil and I saw who he really is when he's not doing his role as a Down syndrome kid. Right, right. And oh he goes, and, and he says, okay, you see me? And I said, yeah. He goes, okay brings the, the veil back down and goes back into his pizza pizza language. And and well, I, you really got a gift. I mean you he gave you a gift is what he oh, did. Oh my unbelievable. Teacher, my yeah. teachers come from all different places. And yep. it's funny because I never questioned any of this and I never connected at all. Right. But in this time of COVID and listening to everybody on the YouTube channel and and connecting with and talking with people like on the side i'm right. connecting all of this and i'm getting a bigger picture of it i now know that that you can um get to the akashic records through shamanic journey, journey. journey. there's many places to the same or many paths it really is place. just like uh, that book uh, many lives many mansions i think it is by gina sim yeah you know you could this We've got Arlene in the chat, and uh, I don't know, you must have heard me, Arlene, but I, I brought you up right in the beginning because uh, of your recent um, veil lifting or, or you know, shamanic uh, journeying and so on. And we were just talking about the... Well, I, um, I don't know where Allie went, but... Arlene, friend me on, on Facebook through Messenger. Um, I hope Allie comes back. I don't know where she went. And I don't know if, if or maybe I'm sure. Um, I'm back. I'm telling you, spirit is really playing with us today. Uh, yeah, it's okay. But yeah. Thanks for just hanging in there. But anyway, Arlene, we just wanted you to, um, uh, no, it wasn't at the start. You weren't here at the start. I know, but I mentioned your name, how wonderful it was and how we to go to next. We each other in. And I said, <laughs> while you were gone, I said, Arlene, messenger me, messenger me on Facebook. <laughs> you know, the other thing, Allie, right before, before I moved from Massachusetts to California, I had a woman that lives on Martha's Vineyard, um, no, on Cape Cod. And she contacted me and she said, we've been watching you. And I, I was like, who's we? And she goes, there is a network of crones. I, oh, didn't yeah. know, I didn't even know what a crone was. She said, there's a network of crones and we've been watching you. And I'd like to invite you and I'd like to mentor you and have you become a crone. And I'm like, Okay. okay. <laughs> so I, it was like about a six month period. I worked really hard. It, it was a lot like doing step work. Yes. I review. And then I had a croning ceremony right mm -hmm. before I moved. And I was, wow. I only, I'm only in contact with, with Phyllis, you know, mm -hmm. who mm -hmm. was 
who was my mentor, Crone. I mm -hmm. don't even know who all these Crone people are. But she said, yeah. we were watching you. And I'm like, I don't know who we are. But I felt like they were also the, the they who talked to me. For the, the wise elders. women. Yeah. The elders. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. And I, definitely because the, the women run Native American, the elders, the women are the ones in charge of their tribes, the grandmothers. So, yes. yes. Well, it's the matriarchal society. Yeah, it is. You know, the women's movement, because I was an interpreter. Um, mm -hmm. I, 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 they, they kept coming, the feminist movement, and I was in my early twenties, kept coming to me and saying, we want accessibility for all. Will you interpret for free? All these, you know, take back the night marches and all. Oh, wow. Yeah. And so I started out as a really young woman interpreting platform, interpreting like you do for a show. Um, right. Inter interpreting all this feminist stuff. And then I started getting invited to feminist organizational activity and all of that. So again, I came in the back door. I come in the back door. I never come in straight. That's you know? okay. We it's need okay. people like you to do that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Well, and it's all connected. It did connect and you made those connections and you were open to those connections. During yeah. COVID is when it all of a sudden, and, and that's when the real downloads, Ooh, that, you know, they've come through. Yes. My, my smell. Yeah. I was yeah. watching, I was watching a, a YouTube channel. Um, the Polish psychic. I can't think of her name right now. Oh, anyway, yeah. when her Violeta, mother, Violetta, yeah. Yeah. When her mother died, this is another weird thing. I was watching when her, when her mother, literally, she got the phone call that her mother had died. She was on YouTube doing a live. Oh, my. And I thought, and I'm really comfortable with the other side. That's a whole other slew of stories. But, um, and I just, I sent, I sent information or, you know, connection to her. Mm -hmm. Allie, I had the, it was like, uh, Bulgarian rose. And I had this, I live in a little tiny space. Okay. I live mm -hmm. in a studio, my whole studio. And it was at night filled with the smell of rose. And I'm like, and it was Bulgarian rose. I don't, mm -hmm. I, I don't know, what it was <laughs> together, but it was, it was uh -huh. this Bulgarian rose smell. And I knew that that was the smell from her Violet's mother. mother. And then I, and I asked her, I said, have you smelled rose? And she, I think she thought I was a crackpot or something like that. No, move that away. That was a gift from her mother. You don't it have was. to do anything with it. Right. But if you make the choice to stay with the ascension energy, at, and that's why, you know, I can make the choice of who I watch. Right. People, people can drink and do, do readings. I love to laugh. There's a whole piece of laughter that's really important to it's serious spiritual soul work laughter right. laughter is yes but not drunk laughter so i can make the choice to, to you know yeah what what well, i just, what yeah. i just want to offer is that when we choose to mix addictive behavior which is 3d with doing the kind of work that we do on these channels mm -hmm. Four and five D. It screws us up. I what yeah. it is is you're you're going through Philadelphia instead of taking the highway, <laughs> getting right down into the middle of it all, where yeah. you really don't want to be. You like to bypass. <laughs> Philadelphia is a nice city. There's lots right. of interesting things. But if you're on the path for spiritual ascension, for me, I don't want to come back and do all this stuff. No, no, neither I have do I. A <laughs> I have you a guy. Use it, use it or lose it, you know? Yeah. One of my guides that has revealed during this time is an Indian woman, and it's a past life thing. She was my grandmother, and I the, oh. past, uh, the past life, I see the, the horse. It was, it was a, a horse. I see the black leg on the side and, uh -huh. a, and a blue, like a kind of a navy blue with black boots, mm -hmm. and I... I'm, I'm an Indian child. I'm running towards, and I know I'm running towards my grandmother. She's putting a, um, a blanket around me and I see the sword come down. 
and it kills my grandmother. That, oh. well, that grandmother is one of my guides now. Okay. She and yeah. she's always been there, and I've always had this like draw to the to the Indian part of my right soul. of yeah. your soul. Yeah. yeah. And she has told me I'm not doing the human thing. I am making the choice. My soul is making the choice to move up into the angel realm. Yep. And and, yep. and, and we get to do that. We get to do that. And I we thought, yeah, well, we do. That's, that's yep. what I want to do. When I pass, Absolutely. man, I don't want to <laughs> be down here in the muck and the mire anymore. I'm tired. I'm right. going to go up to the angel realm and trust some other that's stuff. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Well, I hate to cut this uh, conversation short, but I have some. Terry's coming on at 11, so I have to get oh, going. That's okay, though. Favorite people. Right? Yes. Yeah. So, uh, I just want to thank you for some wonderful sharing, but I also would love you to come back and tell your story, as well as Arlene when she ever gets her story sorted out and or bring Maybe you both I, on. Arlene, yeah? Arlene come, mm -hmm. you and I come back together. Ah, uh, we could do that. Let's yeah. do a show with, with Ar Ar Arlene. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking for uh, for my shaman sisters. Okay. I, well, and my, you know, my. And you heard her story, right? No. On Nasty Women. Oh, you haven't. So go over and listen because it's amazing. Yeah. Everybody. Oh. It's really wonderful. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. And that, yes. And thank you, other Terry. Love you, dear. Thanks, oh. everybody, for being here. I love you guys. And we're going to have Andrea come back soon. Thank you, Andrea. Oh, love you, Andrea. Yeah. Thanks. Bye-bye.